Hello again, everyone. Thank you for coming to our presentation. Um, I will just take a brief moment to do my share screen here. And let us see. I'm sure you can see that, right? <laughs> okay, so thank you again for attending our presentation. My name is Regina Gong and I am from uh, Michigan State University. I am the OER and student, li student success librarian there. And I have Aaron. Yes, hello everyone. <clears throat> My name is Erin Ataralde. I use he, him pronouns. I am currently serving as the ASMSU or the Associate Students of Michigan State University's Vice President for Academic Affairs. I'm a third year at MSU, so I'm a junior this year, studying secondary education, and social relations, and policy. Um, but prior to my position as the VPAA, I also served as the representative for undergraduates in the College of Education at MSU as well. And that's where I got my start for advocating for OER across campus. And that, that um, is Aaron's email. And if you want to follow him on Twitter, that is his Twitter handle. Uh, my name is Regina again, and in my capacity as the OER and Student Success Librarian at MSU, I lead the OER program as well as the OER Award program um, at Michigan State. I also manage our um, open textbook publishing via Pressbooks, and as part of what I do, I give um, a lot of uh, professional development uh, presentations to our faculty, staff, librarians on various topics that deal with open and um, since last academic year and on to this um, academic year I have been facilitating the open pedagogy learning community at MSU. So this presentation is really all about student advocacy and support. I know that our students are at the heart of what I do or what we all do in the open. And I'm so proud that I am sharing this presentation with um, Aaron, who is our student leader at MSU. So before we start, we'll, we just want to, to you know, share with you our origin story or how we came to be here in the open. So um, for me, I started at a community college. So back in uh, 2014, um, I became the OER project manager at Lansing Community College. So that is not far from MSU, it's just in downtown Lansing. And in that role, I led a very successful OER program um, at, at LCC and um, in a community college where a lot of students are, um, you know, non-traditional and it's a commuter, co commuter, commuter college. I was able to harness the power of student participation and advocacy um, by starting with our student employees in the library. So we'll talk about that more as we go along, but um, let's hear about Aaron's um, origin story. Aaron, tell us about it. Yeah, so as I said before, before I came to the position I am now as the Vice President for Academic Affairs at ASMSU, um, last year, I served as a representative in the General Assembly, which is the legislative body for the undergraduate population as the representative of the College of Education. Um, and, you know, this was a time during the pandemic. So one of the biggest um, and most pressing issues that I was trying to tackle was how do we make sure that we are still giving students um, access and um, access to an affordable education. Um, in the back of my mind, you know, there were many things that were often harder to push for, such as decreasing tuition, because those have other externality, more externalities to them, such as, you know, state appropriations and just, you know, cost of um, functioning the universities. But I look deeper and saying, like, how can we actually decrease those hidden costs, as I like to call them for students, which includes, you know, buying textbooks or, or you know, seeking transportation or, you um, all those other costs that you don't see on your tuition bill right away. So I wanted to try to tackle that first. And my first instinct is like, 
let's tackle the issue of the increasing cost of education materials that students would have to purchase. Um, in my own experience, I've definitely spent at least $500 once on, um, you know, textbooks, e-codes, um, which I could have used, you know, to pay rent, to pay down my student debts, to, to even maybe buy some gas so I can travel home to go see my parents who live an hour away. Um, and that, you know, my experience is one of over 40,000 students experienced here at MSU's campus. So I really wanted to tackle that issue head on, um, starting with, you know, just education materials and the cost of those. So, you know, my first instinct was let's create a textbook library where, you know, a service where we can, you know, buy textbooks and check them out to students. Um, but further, you know, looking further into it, it was not sustainable. It was not, you know, encompassing of all the issues. So digging a little bit deeper and researching more, I stumbled across open educational resources and I found the many benefits that it had, not only that it, you know, addressed issue, addressed the overall issues of, you know, those increasing, um, increasing um, cost of buying them, but also address issues of, you know, how do we teach students? How do we encourage students? And how do we, you know, create a better learning environment for students? So. As I was doing my research and research more into it, I happened to stumble across um, the MSU Libraries um, Lib Guide page on OER, which is ran by Regina. And I found it interesting that we at MSU already had a system in place that is fostering OER initiatives. Um, so I said, hey, if there's a system in place, let's, let's get on board with this. So um, if Regina wants to go to the next slide, I actually, um, emailed her um, around October last year. So almost, I think over a month ago, yeah, over a month ago, we or over a year ago, I sent this email to her, you know, saying that I found your web, your web page, and I found it really interesting. Let's, let's get together. Let's talk. I want to learn more about what, what MSU is currently doing, and how ASMSU can help. Um, so that's kind of like my long origin story in OER. Um, and that's how I found Regina and now my my um, partner in crime as I like to call her. <laughs> you know what? When Aaron sent that to me, 5.26 p.m., I think I like, I jumped to my seat and like, oh my gosh, it's like, you know, someone from ASMSU is emailing me about OVR. I, you know, replied right away and told him, when can we meet? And I think within two days, we met in my office, right? Yes, within like the week, we met virtually. Um, and I was just ecstatic that you responded to me in such a quick manner. I wasn't expecting an email that fast. So <laughs> I jumped right to it. Let's, we scheduled a meeting and I, you know, I, I learned more about what we're already doing with OER and how ASMSU could help out with that. Yeah. <laughs> And as you know, all of you know, you, all of you here in this Zoom room, working with and involving students is really critical in any OER initiative. And if you were um, at this morning's plenary when we were doing the Mentimeter questions, um, we ask, we ask the community, what, what motivates you to do OER work? And a lot of you says it's our student. Right. And so if we are doing this for our student, it really is critical that we let them be involved in the work that we do. So, um, yeah, so this is actually the, the general assembly. Can you tell us more about this and then I'll follow up with what happened? Definitely. Yeah. So our general assembly is made out of representatives based on population from all the degree granted colleges um, that have undergraduate students in them. So that ranges from the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources to James Madison's um, College of Public Policy to the um, College of Nursing. So each student, each college uh, gets representative representatives. Additionally, to our um, other groups on campus, such as the Corps and COPS, which are the Council of Racial and Ethnic Students and the Council of Progressive Students, as well as some major governing groups, such as the fraternities and sororities and the Housing Cooperative and the Students Advi uh, Athletes Advisory Committee. So we have a wide range of representatives that represent, you know, all the diverse backgrounds at ASMSU. 
so that's kind of the people in like the in the side right here um in the front here that's you can kind of see me in the corner looking at my laptop there that's our office of the president who's kinds of navigates the advocacy that the General Assembly passes. So that's the most important thing the General Assembly does is they pass our legislations and policies that we want to pursue um, on MSU's campus or in the broader community around us. Yeah, and, and that is also my first involvement with our student government. So I um, came on board at MSU in July 2019, and um, I really want to reach out to our um, student government. And so, um, you know, I, through our dean, uh, we were able to get an agenda uh, time, right? An agenda in one of their uh, general assembly meeting. And I think that was um, October 2019 when um, I was invited to talk to their general assembly. I was given 25 minutes to talk about OER. And at the time, Aaron wasn't involved in ASMSU yet because you came on board in 2020, right? Like spring. So at the time, um, you know, Aaron probably doesn't know about the OER initiative because he wasn't in the in the GA assembly yet. Uh, but but in that uh, meet in that presentation that I did with the student government, I was able to connect with Aaron's predecessor, Brie Aiello, who was the vice president for academic affairs. And she was so excited to be working with me um, with our OER initiative. And at the time, I was telling her that uh, I am thinking of forming an OER um, advisory committee, and I would love for her to be part of it. And so that was, that was the start of my relationship with um, ASMSU. So as I was saying, this is the OER Program Advisory Committee members. Uh, this is the new one now. That's why Aaron is there. Uh, the, the first uh, member, student ASMSU member, is Bree um, Aiello. Uh, like I said, that's Aaron's predecessor. And another student um, student leader representing um, a different college. So there's two students in the advisory committee. And right now, um, Aaron is there as the VPAA, and we are going to uh, do a call for membership in the next GA assembly that I will be a guest again. So, um, Aaron, just want to talk about how does um, ASMSU advocate support and champion OER? Yeah, so definitely. So one of the primary ways that ASMSU just advocates for anything is by passing legislation through our General Assembly, which is, again, the legislative body. So after that initial meeting with Regina, I said to her, let's um, let's create a bill. I mean, that's the starting point for all our advocacy at ASMSU. So over the next week and before the next full session, um, where all the General Assembly representatives meet, we drafted this bill. Um, so our bills kind of have a basic structure of who's introducing it, um, what the bill's meant for, and then kind of our argument, and then later our resolve. So just to kind of go over the bill a little bit, we wanted to initially start off with what was the issue at hand. And the main issue at play was that students are spending a lot of money on, you know, buying textbooks and education materials, oftentimes out of pocket if they don't have, um, if they're not eligible for Pell Grants or grants from the university or from scholarships. Um, that includes also access codes, um, which have been, have been more prevalent in classes now. And I have personal experience with that. I have from my freshman year to now, I have been using more online um, textbooks with one-time access codes um, more than I am using a physical textbook. Um, so those were our first, you know, arguments. And then we got into the arguments of, you know, what is OER and how that can address the issue. So we talked about initially what, you know, OER is, and then talking about what OER can do. So we went from, you know, OERs are, you know, um, these materials that reside in the public domain um, and permitted um, to, for free use. <clears throat> and they can be, you know, not just textbooks, but homework assignments, quizzes, labs, activities that um, 
uh, stu uh, students actually have to partake in oftentimes are graded um, on. And then OERs also allow some, you know, customization to the content of classes to fit, you know, real world issues, you know, real time issues, as well as addressing the most important um, aspect, which is it's not only affordable, but it opens up the doors for more students um, as well. And then we continue with that, talking about MSU's OER um, program and how that's in existence. And then the last part of the bill, which is I think on the next slide, we we did our call to action. So resolve that the the Associated Students of Michigan State University shall advocate that MSU's undergraduate courses utilize more open educational resources for instruction materials and most importantly, when pedagogically appropriate. So we were advocating that professors look at their current, you know, um, instruction methods and see if, if using an OER was something that they could um, utilize in their classes. We understand that, you know, not all courses at MSU will benefit from OER, but we understand that if we can get classes that can do, can use OER, that's where we wanted to start. But not only do we want to see the utilization of more OERs, but just an expansion in general. Um, so that means, you know, expanding the program that we have on campus already, expanding the use of OER to other courses, especially in other, you know, um, study areas that you may not initially see as um, beneficial of using OERs, but could be. Um, so yeah, and then we passed that on October 29th. So again, if you look at the date between our first email and then, it, it was, was very fast. fast. <laughs> yeah, it was very fast. We worked really fast when when um, Aaron told me I wanted to really to, to sponsor a bill on OER. We didn't waste time. I think we crafted this bill within three days. Mm -hmm. So, and I really am proud because really this is collaborative. And there's four pages in that bill. We set the stage as um, Aaron was saying, but, but also Aaron, it's aspirational. And I think this is unique because ASMSU um, in your resolve clause, you mentioned that throughout MSU undergrad courses, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And so, so we have this, this bill, right? We have this bill that the ASMSU student body has um, passed and we publicize. Aside from that, how can, how can the student government help make OER sustainable? So definitely, I mean, the first way that we make it sustainable is that it is present on our mission. So if you go to our website um, and you go through our initiatives, you will see Open Education Resource Awareness Week. Um, so this was actually a succeeding bill that we passed to create an awareness week that aligns with Open Ed Week um, so that we can engage the student body, but most importantly, faculty members on the utilization and the um, usefulness of OERs. Um, and, you know, that's embedded within our mission as the student government is to enhance uh, um, individual and collective student experience through education. Um, so additionally with that, I can go more into detail about what we did last year for our, our inaugural OER Awareness Week, which was from March 1st to March 5th. Um, because of the time that it was, was during the pandemic, most of our um, events were online, more informational. So we had, um, at the beginning of the week, we kicked off with a featured video featuring um, Regina. <coughs> And then throughout the week, we did, you know, social media campaigns. And then one of the best things that we did was um, um, do a panel with faculty members who have adopted OER and, you know, talked about their experiences adopting it, talked about how they saw it more beneficial in their classrooms. And I attended it and also was one of the moderators for it. And, you know, the student interest in it was very, you know, was great in my opinion you know we had about 20 to 30 students in that panel just wanting to know about what is this you know what can i do to you know increase this um increase this movement around campus and another, another way we like to keep stuff sustainable is making sure that there's a presence all over so one of the ways that we make sure that there's a presence of our services or our advocacy is through our merch distribution so 
Um, last year, we asked our marketing department to create some OER merchandising. So they created this little notebook, which, you know, which is first off recyclable. It's all we use out of recyclable material. So it's sustainable in that way. Um, but also stickers, because we know that students love to put stickers on their laptops or their tablets or their water bottles. So, you know, we, we, we made a sticker so students can add that to their collection of stickers and, you know, other students can see it. And you know, ask questions about it if they if they initially knew what an OER was. Um, I think there's some Sarah, more. I, yeah. I, I, I just to interrupt. Um, yeah. We actually ASMSU earmarked some mm -hmm. funds to buy this merchandise, and they had so you had your designer design mm -hmm. this logo, right? The MS. ASMSU branded OER logo. Of course, it has to be Spartan green. Mm -hmm. I think it's a thousand five hundred. Is that right? Yeah, Your we allocate. Yep, we allocate actually just one thousand dollars as a pilot okay. um, to this. So a little quick context: ASMSU collects a student tax um, every semester, about twenty-one dollars, um, which funds all the services and programs we offer, but also includes a general fund where we can pull out for you know donations, allocations. So um the ga was ecstatic to give one thousand dollars to start this initiative and they're probably going to be ecstatic more to give more money so we can increase our awareness week programming in the future and yeah so and we went around the library distributing merchandise to our students who were there that was um around march right right after yeah. the semester break and also, some of some of um, your your student colleagues, um, Aaron, I think, distributed it in the residential halls, in the union, yes. in in various locations around MSU, right? Yes, we did. Um, and you know, um, we also have some at our office, at our like office space where students can come in. We have a little table with all that, um, with all the information about our advocacy. And I think we still have maybe a couple more stickers left from there, but we're definitely going to get more this year because we knew that was, that was such a hit, especially with only only a small handful of students on campus, you know. At the time. Yeah, and so, <clears throat> you know, because you are the student government, you have that pulse of the student, <laughs> right? But can you tell us about how you, you help us advocate um, for OER with administration and faculty and the unique role that um, you as a student leader occupy in, in the governance at MSU? Yes, so one of the great privileges that I have as the VPAA and as well as my predecessor Briello had was that we had regular meetings with you know top administrators at the university. Um, I have monthly meetings with the provost, which is the executive vice president for academic affairs at MSU. And we also have biweekly meetings with the undergraduate associate provost. Um, so, you know, having these month, uh, these really regular meetings allows me to really, you know, argue that these initiatives, especially OER, is what's beneficial for the student body, more specifically the undergraduate population. Um, one of the things that we are currently working on right now as an organization, because we had a lot of bills that dealt with undergraduate education, and this is kind of one of the forefront um, initiatives, is creating a best um, teaching slash instructors guideline. Um, that is something that we're currently working with the Office of the Provost to create, so instructors can look at that kind of guideline sheet and see how, what they can implement in their classrooms to make sure that their students are successful. Um, additionally, you know, MSU just recently passed our strategic plan, which is a 10 year plan and goals that we want to um, achieve by the year 2030. And the first and the first listed goal and initiative is student success. So we were able, you know, um, we are now able to argue that, you know, if we want students to succeed, if we want students to graduate at higher rates, if we want students to have a more well rounded and well diverse education. OER is one of those initiatives that can that can drive that goal. Um, so we're in talks with you know with the again with the associate provost for undergraduate education's office on how we can begin um, persuading faculty members and instructors to utilize OERs in the classroom and in their construction. Overall, um, overall, you know when it comes to student success, um, students know what's best for their success because we're in the classrooms every day. We under we you know we we um, 
we um, know like what's what's working for us, what's not working for us. And I remember looking at some of the uh, surveys um, and many students love the use of OERs. And I think we'll get that. To yeah, that we'll, get, we'll get to that. And, and to your point, <laughs> to your point, um, Aaron, you know, the, the proximity to power, right, that you have as student yeah. leader is really integral for for us you know um, oer leaders who may not have that regular uh meeting right mm -hmm. with with the provo or certainly with the um, associate provo graduate education or, or undergraduate education and and when it comes to faculty um this is what we we did right when when we did the um open Open Education Aware Awareness Week, we um, awarded, or the ASMSU student body awarded uh, the OER Leadership Award to our faculty OER creators. So I work with them to determine who are the faculty who are using OER, created OER, and we did a list and they printed this out. Bree was still the... Um, uh, the VPAA at the time. Next year, when we do our uh, open OER Awareness Week, you are going to sign this, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and I think this gets to the part, oh, if we can go, but yeah, I think this gets to the yeah. part of our obviously with faculty members. So at the end of the day, faculty is the, are the individuals that get to decide how they instruct their students. So we also not only contact administrators, but we also were circulating letters to, you know, leadership and faculty to address, you know, using OERs as an instruction, a part of their instruction and using that OER leadership award that's presented by the student government, hopefully give a little push to faculty to be like, you know, students are recognizing that these are great, you know, curriculum designs or great instruction methods. Let me test it out. Let me see if that works for my course. Um, and we're seeing, I hope we're seeing more faculty members getting involved or, you know, you know, moving into using OERs in their classrooms for students. Yes, and, and we are. We are increasing our OER creators and, and adopters of OER. And um, as you were alluding to uh, Aaron earlier, so beyond cost savings, these are some of the things that our students are telling us right how does the use of oer in their <laughs> courses um impacted them and this narrative this narrative is not um new to us right um in our uh, survey we are able to to dig deep into the impact that we have with uh, traditionally underrepresented students and so we have these testimonials um, attributed to first gen Pell eligible students and how it is impacting them. Aaron, can you speak more about this? Yes, definitely. So, you know, talking with representatives, um, especially the representatives who supported the OER bill, you know, I was asking them, you know, what else does this mean to students? Um, and many pointed out them, many pointed out those especially who had who were already using o OERs in their classrooms that they thought their instruction was more meaningful um, just because OERs allow us to, you know, take present issues and insert that into the curriculum or in, even in the textbook, um, which is something that students crave nowadays. You know, they're, they're not just wanting to learn about theories and, you know, bullet points. They want to know how we can use that information in the real world when we get into our actual professions in the future. And they loved the fact that OERs allowed that to happen where, you know, you know, professors could insert articles of, you know, what happened that day or what happened recently, or they can insert, you know, um, information that's relatively new. Um, so it allows real world learning to occur and especially large classrooms where oftentimes OERs are used. But I think one of the most important, you know, um, um, you know, um, successes of OERs is that it addresses one of the other issues that students have, and that is mental health. Um, so ASMSU has, you know, long standing advocacy on improving mental health at the university. And I think OER, especially at the time during COVID, you know, would would have been very beneficial to students, especially, you know, since COVID had impacted many of their financial situations, impacted, you know, their proximity to MSU and their access to textbooks. I remember, you know, hearing some students say that I cannot 
get my textbook from the local bookshop that sells it because I am literally all the way across the across the coast. And I, I have to wait now to get it. Um, and many students even weren't able to purchase their textbooks until a couple weeks into the semester already behind on their work. OERs allow them to immediately have that because it's, again, it's in the public domain, it's used, um, it can be used by anyone and it's readily available and again, read and readily changeable um, when needed. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, these testimonies speak to itself. You know, one said, I love this book, so helpful and well-written. Um, I enjoyed the fact that it was very comprehensive. Um, the quality was great. So OERs, you know, they match the quality of the textbooks that we were already getting and buying, but um, it addresses those other issues that students have, which is, you know, how my education in general, but also my mental health and my well-being um, as well. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah, I want to I want to address some of the things that are in the chat. I have not seen it yet, but you know, we want to have some time for um, Q and A. So, lastly, um, what what can you recommend? You know that we do as OER leaders, um, so that we can collaborate more with students and student government leaders. This has been. Um, you know, some of the challenging um, areas in OER work and OER advocacy, harnessing the power of student participation, collaboration, and engagement with uh, the, the greater OER initiative on campus. So what might be the ways in which we can, we can do that? Um, I think two big ways that, you know, we um, OER leaders can collaborate with students and student governments is first off presence. Um, you know, I would have never figured out that OERs were a thing unless until I found out that MSU had a LibGuide about it. So making sure that, you know, that initiative is accessible and present when students are researching that, you know, online is something that I recommend. So um, if you don't have a LibGuide or, you know, like a blog <laughs> about it or a website, I recommend that you, you know, you start one because you're able to, you know, students <laughs> will be able to find it. And then, especially student leaders, because we're very active in our research and our, you know, solution um, research. I think the next big thing is forming that long-term partnership, um, you know, and that means a lot of things, you know, so not only, you know, having partnerships with, you know, the current leadership and student governments, but making sure you have sustainable partnerships. So I'm a junior right now. This is my second year working with Regina, but in about a couple of years, I'll be, I'll be gone from MSU, which is sad to think about, but um, me and Regina are already working on a ways and how we can get freshman representatives, you know, new leaders in the organization and to, to have some interest in this initiative. Um, but also not, not only a sustainable partnership, but also a very personal partnership. Um, I remember me and Regina's first meeting, we figured out we were both Filipino. And I think that was kind of cool um, that I, that, you know, someone who, someone who I, I already felt familiar with was felt even more familiar and more familial. You know, I feel like we're, we're basically not only friends, but we're, she's, she's part family now. Yes. <laughs> um, so, you know, students are looking for you know people who they can you know share their stories with share their experiences with um and regina was awesome at that you know she listened to students concerns she she addressed them in a very professional but also conversational manner because sometimes we're just tired of hearing professional talk we want to hear you know personal discussions about you know how this could be helping us so you know it's love that motivate you know love for students that that we love to see from people who are trying to help students. And I see that when, you know, me and the General Assembly see that from um, Regina all the time. Um, and lastly, I think, you know, just going back to presence, you know, seeing how you can attend a meeting and talk about the issue and the initiative at hand, even if it's not to the General Assembly, but just to the leadership, um, I think that's important as well. Thank you for that, Aaron. You are gonna make me all teared up, but really, when when I found out that Aaron is half Filipino, I was like, oh my gosh, Aaron, we are, we are, you know, we are like family. So I don't always see a lot of us 
right? Um, in academia. And when I see that one, I really hold on to it. And we have really this personal relationship that I hope we can um, maintain, you know, long before, long after your, your days here at MSU, um, you know, are, are over, right? So when you graduate, um, hopefully you will, you will imbibe that, that open ethos as you progress in your career in, in academe. So we'll stop talking and we'll, we'll, we'll try to, you know, address some of the questions that you have in the chat. And if you want to unmute yourself, please do and ask us questions. Oh, thank you. I'm going to read your, your, the things in the chat now. Oh, okay. So um, Doreen says, could you share a copy? Yes. Um, actually, one of the, the bill that they pass in relation to the main OER bill is uh, putting a CC by license in the bill itself of first, right? Because you mm -hmm. don't do that. But it's like, well, folks will probably want to adopt your bill. And so, yes, well, putting a, a, a CC license and we'll give you the link probably embedded in our presentation so you will see it. Um, another, do you have a list of the questions that, yes, I have a list of the questions. So it's, you know, it's 11, no, 10 questions, not that many because we don't want to inundate students <laughs> when we do our end of the semester uh, feedback. Um, yes, I can share that with, with you too. Um, let me see what else is in here. Do you track how many faculty members? Yes, I do. I am big on assessment. I am big on um, tracking uh, OER adoptions. Uh, in my presentation pre-recorded on Wednesday, you will hear more about that. So um, yes, we, we do track. We started tracking it fall 2019 semester and have been doing that every semester. Uh, and how did higher administration help with your efforts? Um, maybe Aaron, you can you can address this. Yeah, definitely. So um, we usually like our, um, when we meet with administration, administration, it's, you know, addressing like the bills that have passed. So oftentimes they kind of guide us to other organizations at MSU on where we can start the initiative. So we talked with the provost about creating a teaching best guidelines. And then that she moved us to the associate provost for undergrad education who has more of the resources, more of the, um, the tools to actually begin crafting a best teaching guideline. So soon we'll be working with possibly, you know, the teaching and learning center on campus or the hub, as well as working with, you know, the libraries. I mean, we already have a special relationship with libraries. Um, mm -hmm. So they often guide us and then they can also, you know, support initiatives through other, other governance systems throughout the university. Um, we're still kind of in our, you know, planning phase right now, but we, we are definitely seeing higher admins, you know, direct us and give us resources that we need to, and advice to, to like, um, pursue the advocacy. And one question here from um, Todd Sapon says, how often do you educate the GA membership? So um, I am, ideally we do it like every semester. So um, I, the next guesting <laughs> that I have is uh, the November meeting of the General Assembly. Aaron, do I have 20 or 25 minutes? <laughs> I think you have about 20 to 25 minutes to meet, yes. Yeah, so I have 25 minutes to talk about the OER initiative, the success that we've been having, and also put a call out there for another member of the OER Program Advisory Committee. And how do you advertise to students? So right now we do not have OER course markings yet in our student information system. Um, we just migrated or yeah, we just migrated to a new SIS. And so uh, a lot of the campus uh, systems are still working towards optimizing that new SIS. So um, that is a plan in the future. 
Hi, I'm sorry. I just put down um, in the chat that we are out of time, but um, I am going to just turn off the um, recording and but you are welcome to stay and talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just oh, thank you. Yeah, if you have any question, we can stay up to 3 4 